Hey everyone, Jinx here and I'm a Genshin Impact Math Guy now. So in today's video, we are once again going to be revisiting our new goth GF, Rosaria. In the previous video, we already covered Carry Rosaria, link in the top right in the description to see that if you haven't already. And instead, in this video, we will be talking about Rose as a support or sub DPS option, which in general, I consider her stronger role. Now in that last video, we already covered the TLDR on Rose, but here it is again. As a physical Crescent Pike carry, she's I not bad, not amazing. As a reverse melt carry, she's basically a cryo Hu Tao with 4 star numbers. As a freeze carry or support, she's slightly weaker than Kaya until she hits Constellation 2. As a general cryo support, she's slightly weaker than Kaya until she hits again Constellation 2. And as a reverse melt support, she's slightly better than Kaya at C0. However, as we'll be covering in this video, these comparisons to Kaya don't necessarily matter in Rose's strongest team because, well, you run both. Now, before we get all into that, I do want to remind remind y'all that Tuna does stream live on Twitch almost every single day. He's been playing a lot of Monster Hunter Rise, as well as Genshin, as well as some other variety content lately. We are business partners, so any follows, any Twitch Prime, subscriptions, anything like that over on the Twitch does help us both out a lot, and I do hang out in voice chat a few times a week. So if you like live streams and you want to come interact with us, be sure to come check us out at twitch.tv slash Tuna. Alright, let's talk about our goth GF as a support. As we covered in the previous video, Reverse Melt Carry Rose is her strongest role and the same is true for support. As this is her strongest niche, let's start the video off by diving deep into how she performs here. So the thing that makes her so strong as a Reverse Melt support is the fact that every single hit of her elemental skill and her ultimate have separate internal cooldowns, meaning every single hit can melt. And by contrast, Kaya can only melt 5 hits out of his ult due to the internal cooldown on the cryo application of his 13 hit ultimate. However, when we directly compare Kaya to Rosaria, at 0 EM, Kaya's ult simply has so much more base DPS that they're almost equal in terms of DPS output for their ults. Now, because their elemental skills deal basically the exact same damage, this leads to their melted ult DPS at 0 EM being roughly on par with each other while Rose does get ahead further the more EM investment you have. However, ever, our goth GF shares crit rate with her team and her elemental skill generates slightly more energy than Kaya's in non-freeze teams. Additionally, she has a few digits more base attack, although this is such a minor difference it's barely worth mentioning. She also just, as I mentioned earlier, benefits more from EM due to having more multiple DPS, while Kaya prefers to build more attack percent. This is due to how low his melt percentage is on his ult, so he prefers to just build more base damage. And in the reverse melt team you're basically always running Bennett and Bennett makes the effects of Kaya's attack percent you put into his build lesser compared to Rosaria scaling with EM. All of these combined put a Constellation Zero Rose slightly ahead of a Constellation Zero Kaya as a reverse melt support. And if you have Constellation 2, Rosaria comes out quite a bit ahead due to her ult getting two more meltable pulses. However, ever, ever, none of this really matters because in teams where Rose is a reverse melt support, you also want to run a Kaya. The point of this analysis is to demonstrate how she is a slightly better reverse melt support than Kaya is if you for some reason had to pick between the two, but again, you generally run both. Speaking of teams, there's pretty much two teams that Rose fits in well as a reverse melt support. There's the new best reverse melt swap team and then the classic reverse melt Klee team. So let's take a look at this swap team first that I have been calling Rose vs Melt. This team is basically the same as Rose's reverse melt carry team aka the Circles team except for we sub out Chong Yun with Kaya. This means we lose the multiple charge attacks that Rose gets in exchange for running a Kaya that can reverse melt and just deal a good amount of swap DPS with his elemental skill spam. The core enabling theory is the same as in the Circle's team. Zhang Ling provides Pyro Aura with a Gua Ba and Pyro Nado and use that to melt Kaya and Rose's DPS. And whenever Zhang Ling's abilities are not active, you can apply strong Pyro Auras with either Bennett's ult or his elemental skill spam, as well as him funding Zhang Ling. In the Circle's comp, you gap fill between cooldowns between your team's abilities with reverse mod charge attacks. In this comp, you instead gap fill with Rosaria, Kaya, and Bennett's elemental skill spams. Remember that Bennett's elemental skill applies a strong pyro aura, so he's good for around 3 melts. This means you can melt both hits of Rosaria's elemental skill and then also Kaya's elemental skill off of one Benny elemental skill hit. However, be sure to always start with Rosaria's elemental skill then Kaya's elemental skill if you want to melt all 3 hits. Kaya's elemental skill applies a strong cryo aura, so it burns too much of the remaining pyro gauge if you start with it so you won't end up melting Rosaria's second hit. 
I personally find this team a lot more fun to play than our got GF's reverse mod carry team, aka the Circles team. However, this team is intrinsically more expensive to run than said Circles team. This is because in the Circles team, Rosario deals the largest percentage of a team's DPS by a good margin, and you can afford to just invest in her and not invest in any of your three other supports. If you want to learn more about what this kind of carry investment looks like, we do have a previous video covering the recommendations for the most efficient resin investments for carry teams. Link in the top right and the description. See, the thing is Rose vs Melt is not a carry team, it's a swap team. However, in this particular team comp, Kaya as well as Rosaria deal close to the same amount of damage, so you want both to be invested with a slight leaning towards investing in Rosaria first. Zhang Ling and Bennett can be minimally invested supports in this team and still function perfectly fine, but Kaya only provides damage to this team. This is versus Chong Yun in the Circles team who can be minimally invested as well because he's really there for the utility. In terms of clearing speed power, this team also gets around 40 second clears with Rose and Kaya heavily invested than Zhang Li and Benny with lower investments. And my Kaya is running the exact same set that my Chong Yun was running in the Circles team. This puts it roughly on par with the Circles team, although I will say it does feel like it clears a few seconds faster comparatively. I'm certain that if I push this team a little bit further and get a cleaner run, I could be pushing around a 36-37 second clear on this team. And another thing to keep in mind is that my Circles team is running a Constellation 6 Chong Yun and my Kai is only Constellation 3. The reason why this team ends up clearing a little bit faster than the Circles team is because there's simply a big discrepancy between the damage Kaya and Chong Yun deal. When both RC0 Chong Yun literally deals half the DPS of Kaya when both are ulting. This means even when you reverse meld all of Chong Yun's ult, he's only getting a 1.5 times more multiplier on that so he's still not matching Kaya's DPS at base. In fact, even when Chong Yun is Constellation 6 and gets an additional hit on his ult, his melted DPS is still not better than a C0 Kaya's ult, melting only 5 out of 13 hits. This means in terms of pure swap rotations, Chong Yun just can't ever compete with the damage Kaya puts out. However, this is not the whole story because Chong Yun also provides a lot of utility. For example, Chong Yun allows Rose to be able to do melted charge attacks, which are a nice DPS increase for the team. This means Kaya isn't just competing against Chong Yun's DPS, he's competing against Chong Yun's DPS plus whatever extra DPS Rose gets from those charge attack spams. If we do a fairly basic motion value comparison on this, then we can see that if Chong Yun is below Constellation 3, you need a little over 3 melted charge attacks from Rose to match the DPS Kaya would otherwise be bringing. However, if we have a Constellation 6 Chong Yun and a C0 Kaya, then you only need about 2 charge attacks from Rose melting in order for you to match the DPS. Again though, these are very bare bones calculations that don't account for things like Chong C2 as well as build discrepancies etc. So take these as rough estimates, but the point is is that if you are able to fit in some charge attacks on rows that are melting, you can compete with and even beat the DPS that the Rose vs Melt team can with a Kaya on it. Now because my Chong Yun is C6, if I only need to have about 2 charge attacks from Rose to match the DPS of my Kaya team, why is my Kaya team performing better? This is because in the current 12-3 where I'm testing these teams, you have to dodge so much stuff, you don't really get the space to do that many charge attack spams on your Rosaria. By contrast, the Kaya team is a swap team, so as long as you're popping all of your stuff off of cooldown, you're just filling the gap with normal attacking with whoever's on the field, and you don't lose that much damage having to dodge. This means in content where you have to dodge a lot of attacks, swap teams tend to do a bit better than they would otherwise. Regardless, these are both both very strong teams, run whichever one you prefer. I personally like this one better because I enjoy playing swap teams and I find it very fun. However, it is more expensive to invest in because both Rose and Kaya need to have damage on this team. Now, the other option for Rose vs Melt is to run Klee instead of Zhang Ling with Klee acting as more of a traditional carry role. Ever since the Jingzhou changes very, very long ago, Klee hasn't been able to be consistently vaporized by Jingzhou. She simply outpaces his Hydro application because she applies so much pyro so fast. That's right, when you run Kli with Jingzhou, you end up vaporizing Jingzhou's damage more often than Kli's. However, this massive amount of pyro application from Kli is a good thing if you want to reverse melt your cryo supports. Previously, Klee's strongest team was a reverse melt team with Chong Yun, Kaya, and Bennett, and now we can just replace Chong Yun with Rosaria and have an even stronger melt team. However, I have not personally played as this comp because I simply hate playing Klee. 
And I do see potential issues with this comp because you will have to be playing Klee, who is a charge attack carry around both a Bennett circle and a Rosaria circle, which might be a lot to ask if you don't have stellar movement mechanics on Klee. Despite the fact that Jing Cho cannot vape Klee and instead Klee is vaping Jing Cho, it does have the distinct advantage of Jing Cho's damage following Klee no matter where she goes. Still, this is definitely one of, if not Klee's strongest team at the moment if you are willing to play around the circles. Gear wise, a Rose who is going to be a reverse mark support runs the same stuff she would run if she's going to be a reverse mark carry. So for weapons, prioritize Dragon's Bane, otherwise if you don't have one then a Deathmatch or Black Cliff both work well. And similar to her being a reverse smelt carry, you are best off running a Lava Walker set if you have good substats because she should always be hitting something with a Pyro Aura. However, if you don't have good substats for a Lava Walker set, you can just run a two-piece Noblesse, two-piece Cryo. But as always, the golden rule of Genshin is it depends. It is entirely possible for your personal set for Azaria to be a zero set bonus set, so the best thing you can do is punch your gear into the Genshin Optimizer and see what it pulls out. As for Kaya in this team, his weapon of choice is going to be Lion's Roar. The passive makes him deal more damage when he's hitting a pyro afflicted unit, which he basically always is. Additionally, its substat is attack percent versus the EM substat on Dragon's Bane, but Kaya prefers attack percent over EM because he doesn't melt a large percentage of his ult. However, if you don't have a Lion's Roar, Iron Sting is a very strong free-to-play choice as well. And for artifacts, he's exactly the same as Rosario. Prioritize Lava Walkers if you can, otherwise 2-piece Noblesse, 2-piece Cry was good, but at the end of the day, just punch your stuff into the Genshin Optimizer. Alright, now that we've covered Rose's strongest support roles as a reverse melt support, let's take a look at how she stacks up in other cryo support roles. First off, let's just take a look at how she looks as a general cryo support for something like an Amp Hu Tao team or a Razor physical team. Overall, the answer is she's a worse Kaya until she hits Constellation 2. Rose's E basically does the same damage as Kaya's, and Kaya's ult deals 29% more DPS than Rose's does until she's cons 2, at which point they're basically on par. Kaya's ult also follows you around, which can make it easier to play around than Rose's static circle on her ult. However, Kaya's ult has much worse AoE as it does require enemies to be clustered together in order for it to splash damage. However, Rose's ult does last 2 seconds longer than Kaya's and applies more cryo overall compared to his. Rose gets 6 to 7 instances of cryo over the course of 10 seconds versus Kaya's ult giving him 5 over 8 seconds, but it's honestly a minor enough difference. Overall, their cryo application ability is about on par. Rose has a little bit more window for it, but it is a slower application overall. However, Rose does share a crit with her team, which is very valuable as a support, although not likely to make up the 29% damage difference between her and Kaya's ult at con 0. Crit sharing is the kind of thing that's very hard to quantify without full team DPS calculations, which have not been done yet. Another advantage Rose has is that she does generate more energy than Kaya in a non-freeze team. She gets a fixed 3 particles per elemental skill pop, while Kaya gets 2 to 3. This means in non-freeze team, Rosara needs a little bit less energy recharge, meaning she can get a little stat advantage over Kaya. However, ever, this only matters if you have enough artifacts to be able to tweak your E. ER. For those who don't have a wealth of ER substats to mix and match for your set, you're probably just gonna be running an ER sounds on both anyway. So yeah, as a general cryo support, she's generally speaking just a slightly worse Kaya until she hits cons too. Now, freeze comps are where Kaya starts to pull a bit further ahead of Rosaria. This is because in freeze teams, Kaya's Ascension 4 passive does give him an extra 2 particles of energy generation anytime he freezes something with his elemental skill. This means Kaya and his team need less energy recharge because he's generating more particles for them. And even though cons 2 does give Rosaria equal DPS to Kaya, the question then becomes, is Rosaria's crit sharing more valuable than the extra energy Kaya generates? The answer to that is really a big shrug. If you have the ability to tweak your ER to get more stats out of the fact that Kaya is generating more energy, then you can definitely get a lot more stats than Rosaria can share with her crit sharing. Although this does depend a lot on how invested your Rosaria is and how close you get to a very high crit rate. However, you might not necessarily have the artifacts necessary to be able to tweak ER like that. Another important thing to note while we're on the topic of energy is that yes, Rosa's C4 does generate extra energy for her, but it's only for her. Her teammates do not get that energy. Overall, I would consider a C2 Rose about on par with a C0 Kaya for a free support, it just depends which utility you value more. Rose's ult at C2 gives you a larger freeze window, however Kaya's elemental skill is a strong cryo application so it freezes for longer than Rosaria's does. 
specifically for Ganyu. Free steams, it is nice you don't have to run Shot Ganyu if you run Rose because her ult is a static circle. But you generally will play Shot Ganyu anyway, so that Jingcho's orbital swords can give you AoE high replication for freezing. Rose gives you crit sharing, but Kaya generates significantly more energy than she does. So yeah, it just depends on which you value more, but it is markedly true that Kaya is more designed for freeze teams while Rosara is more designed for reverse melt teams. At the end of the day, use whichever one you want because they're so close. But yeah, reverse melt Rose very good. Otherwise, Rose is basically a slightly worse Kaya until she hits Constellation 2, unless you really value her crit sharing over Kaya's higher base DPS. Which is definitely an argument in her favor, but that's really up to you which you prefer. As a 4-star unit, she's not making any huge waves, but she's also not a weak unit. Kaya is actually one of the strongest 4-star units in the game. He is criminally underrated, so Rose basically being on par with him is not a bad thing. Alright, that's all we have to talk about on our Goth GF. Thank you for watching the video as always. If you enjoyed the video, be sure to like the video, let us know what you liked about it in the comment below, and share it with any of your friends who might have or are considering pulling for Rosaria. And again, don't forget to does stream live on Twitch almost every single day. It's a great place to come get a daily dose of interaction with us. Don't forget we do also have our Twitters. The at Jinx Mathlos is my personal account where I post what I'm working on or just general personal updates. And the at Jinx Tuner account is the company account run by Tuner for things like official channel updates for either the Twitch or YouTube channel or professional business inquiries. Don't forget we also have our Discord server, the Mathalos Nest. Great group of people there all playing games together, learning together, and a good place to hang out. And of course, none of this will be possible without the generosity of our patrons. I say this every single video, and y'all know I'm gonna keep on saying it every single video. Y'all the best. Alright, be sure to check the description to links to various things from the video as always. And of course, be sure to subscribe, hit the notification bell, and that way YouTube will let you know as soon as our new videos come out. As for the next video, I am working on getting a child revisit video covering all of the things we have learned about child since his initial release. He is a very complicated character. Happy waifu hunting whalers, we'll see you in the next one, bye!